Hi everybody, this is Alex from Rundeck. We get a lot of questions about how do you make your automation safer to use for other people that want to reuse it. Well, of course you could just write a script or have a job that calls your underlying tool, but it's very easy to write plugins in Rundeck, and those plugins can create guardrails about how you want your underlying tool to be used. So I have the uh, our tutorial anvils going here, and let's pretend that we want to let people run uh, certain SQL scripts uh, on their MySQL database. So of course I could just imagine writing a job that uses a command or script step that calls that MySQL command, but I want to make it safer for people to do that, and especially I want to make sure that we don't have to hard code the password to the database someplace. So I'm going to take you through what that looks like once it becomes a step plugin. Let me first just show you a job that I've already defined that calls this kind of step plugin. You can see it has a, an option here. I might want to give it a database name. There could be other things I want to pass on to the MySQL command line. But um, what does it look like for somebody to run this job? Well, you can see here it's got a little icon. I can customize how the step looks. Got the MySQL icon here. Um, shows a little code editor about what kind of SQL I want to run. Um, does it have a dry run, where the database host is, the database name, username, and that password. So this is nice. So instead of having to tell everybody where the password is, I can uh, put it in the key store. So this might seem like a difficult task, but actually it's quite easy to wrap these kinds of tools in a Rundeck plugin. So I'm going to take you through what that looks like for this example. And well, first, of course, it begins with the script. Uh, this is a super trivial bash script, which in the end is just going to call the MySQL command line. You can see all the flags. I'm sure anybody who's run MySQL familiar with all these is the host, the user, the password, the database, and the SQL to run. So we can expose all of this as a normal looking shell script. You could write this in anything, Python, Ruby, your favorite interpreted scripting language. It just has to be something that exists on the machine you're gonna run it. In this case, we have that little dry run flag. You can see that you get environment variables passed on by Rundeck to tell you about how that plugin was, was written. Um, so if it was true, it's just gonna print out what it would do, obscure the password a little bit, um, but if it's uh, not a dry run, it'll actually run it. So you basically take a script or wrap a command line with something like this. And the next step is to make it a plugin. So really, for these kind of plugins, it's just a, a directory hierarchy convention. You've got the parent directory here. This can pretty much be named anything you want. But then there is a content subdirectory, a file called plugin.yaml. And this is really a config file that tells Rundex plugin runner how to call these underlying script here. You put your script in that contents directory. And then if you want, you can put other resource files. And here we have that icon that will display. But you can put other files here that your script might need. And uh, finally, let's take a look at this plugin.yaml file. So some of it just tells us Rundex what version it is. But really, the need of it is in this provider section. So the provider really tells Rundeck what kind of plugin it is. In this case, it's a remote script node step. What this means is I can run it on the Rundeck server, but I can also have this execute on the uh, database machine itself. This tells Rundeck that if it sees it's a, a remote node to copy it over there and run it. Um, it tells Rundeck to invoke it using this interpreter. So here it's just using bash, but you know, like I said earlier, could be a different kind of interpreted script. This is the script file it's going to run. The arguments are going to pass to it. And for each of these little config properties, you see here further down in the YAML um, that we're naming each one of them. So the SQL script property, this is going to contain the actual XQL code. And with this cool little rendering option, it will turn it into an ACE code editor that has syntax support and some extra key bindings. Um, you can see here our dry run is a Boolean flag. We have a few string properties for the host, the name, and the username. And to tell Rundeck how to read that password 
out of the key store automatically and pass it to our, our little command wrapper, we had a few more rendering options here that basically tell Rundeck how to do that. There's a little bit of extra fanciness here. If we were to have executed this step on a remote node, in the resource model, we could also define the path to the storage uh, to get that key. So it doesn't necessarily have to be done uh, as a as a input to the property from the job level. So to build it, what does it take? Essentially, all you have to do is just make it a zip file and uh, copy it over into your plugins directory, which is rdeck based libxt. And from there on, it becomes available to any uh, job. So this one, just going to the add a step, you'll see it shows up there in the list right there. But since we already have that step defined, we can look at it look from the job editor. So we have the SQL code. Of course, it's super trivial. This would be whatever you want. Interesting to note, you could also embed tokens. So if you had other options, for example, maybe I had an option.foo, I could mix that into the code. So maybe further make this a abstracted, reusable SQL script. If you need to pass parameters to a stored procedure, for example, that might be useful. There's our drive run flag and our selector into the key store. So now we don't have to worry about how we'll manage the password access. We can put whatever input options we want to wrap, how we'll actually call the MySQL command and feel good that we can expose this to whatever other use cases that uh, we have in our example. All right, well, that's it. Uh, hope you uh, are able to do this for yourself and let us know if you have any input. Thanks.